YouTube. I am Lex and welcome to Sandals and Steel Toes. I am so happy to have you here on the third, third garden tour of 2020. It has been 20 days since the last garden tour. I know it's been a little while, but there really hasn't been a whole lot going on until like the last week or so. And so I'm really excited to show you all that's going on in the garden today. So right now we are out in my way backyard in the woods, sitting on the footbridge, which Mr. Steel Toes, Carmen, uh, wonderfully built for us uh, earlier this year. And there's a link to that video down in the description uh, if you wanna check that out. So I'm sitting here enjoying the lovely stream behind me, seeking some relief from this warm day. Now, where I live in Ohio in zone 6A, mid 70 degree day is actually pretty warm compared to what we're used to here. Um, it has been a wild spring. We have gone from having snow early in May to 80 degree weather, you know, couple days later uh, back down to the 50s so it has been up and down up and down and I will tell you the garden has struggled a little bit with all those inconsistencies the week where we had some really great 80 degree weather um, everything just flourished and grew so quickly but this last week it's been a little bit cooler uh, dropping down into the 50s so next week we are anticipating some warmer weather a lot more rain than what we've been having because it's been pretty dry here too um, so I'm really hoping that helps kick things off with our growing season because it's a little bit slow growing right now. So I forgot to tell you, today's date is June 16th. Uh, we are just a couple days away from the beginning of summer. So summer break is officially about to start. So let's go ahead and walk up to the garden. We'll go start checking things out and I'll stop yapping back here. So just before we get started in the garden, I wanted to give an update on the baby hawks. If you have been following that, if not, little backstory, we have red-tailed hawks that live back here in our woods. Uh, they have made a nest here in this very old, large sycamore tree. Unfortunately, the sycamore tree is sick. Um, on the other side of the tree, down by the base, uh, is very hollowed out. Um, kind of dangerous. We have been discussing taking the tree down. However, with the uh, newly uh, baby red tail hawks that were hatched up in the nest this spring, we're reconsidering that and just at this time letting uh, things play out the way they're gonna play out because we really don't wanna disturb the nest. Uh, if you can see it up there, that is the nest for the red tailed hawks that live back here. Uh, the babies did start flying. Um, about 10 days ago, it was June 6 when we first noticed them starting to fly and go out of the nest. Um, I don't see any babies up there right now. Nest looks pretty empty. Um, in the mornings, they're usually up there, but by this time of day, there is no one to be found, and I assume they are up in the skies uh, learning and practicing their flying skills. Well, here she is behind me. Uh, since we're coming up from the woods, I'm gonna start this garden tour a little bit differently and start with the back half of the garden and work our way towards the front. Uh, so it's kind of a different view as you can see here, but I'm really excited and I hope you love it. As we walk up to the back arch of the garden, we come to two raised beds made out of cinder block. And in these red beds are what is called the Eden Climbing Rose. So there's one on each side newly planted a few, uh, just a couple weeks ago and these are going to have really beautiful pink roses some red noodle long beans here on the corner so those will also go up and over the trellis since these roses were going to take a little while to get established i did want this trellis to be filled with something this year so over here on all of these angled panels are squashes are allowing the different varieties of squash we have to trellis up these so that we're growing vertically. Also allowing for a lot of airflow to go through these squashes, which is gonna help prevent um, diseases such as powdery mildew and help keep the uh, fruits up off the ground. So in this first row here, we have spaghetti squash. 
Uh, this week their growth did stop a little bit since it's been cooler, but I anticipate they'll catch up pretty quickly. Right behind here is a squash and it is the Buen Gusto de Horno squash. Um, it's a Baker Creek seed, so it's a, one of a rare heirloom varieties. And this is gonna make a really cool big green squash with um, kind of warty, bumpy green skin on the outside. So this is gonna be a really nice one to see once it is done, but it's got lots of growing to do still. Of uh, the Butternut Rugosa, this is also a rare uh, heirloom seed provided by Baker Creek. You can go on their website if you're ever interested in purchasing seeds from Baker Creek. And behind there we have um, patty pan squashes. Back here is where the pumpkins are growing. Behind it is going to be the Big Max pumpkin. So if, if allowed, uh, this pumpkin is supposed to get really, really big. Um, and I'm going to allow that to ramble out into the yard. So I'm training it to crawl uh, towards us here and not up any kind of trellis because any pumpkin that grows off that is going to be way too big. Okay, so I walked on over to the other half of the squash trellises and right here is a butternut waltham squash. So this is a typical butternut and then the two on the end are, are Canada crookneck squashes. Um, those are a variety of yellow squash that are going to be larger, have more of a bumpy rind. Now, Whatever happened to the squash in here, I'm not sure. So I sowed a uh, sweet meat squash and I did that um, May 23rd and the first round of seeds didn't germinate. So I went ahead and did more. Um, I put a lot in, probably 10 seeds uh, here and 10 seeds over there the second time and none of those germinated either. Um, I've since tried to start some in the house and, on a paper, wet, paper towel. Um, those aren't having much luck either. So I think the seeds are just have no germination and I'm gonna just end up putting something here. Uh, many of my other squashes, I have multiple in one spot just cause all the seeds came up. Um, kind of like this one here. This is a Geet Akosomen. This is another one of those Baker Creek heirlooms. It's gonna be a really long orange squash, really big. Um, probably something that many of you haven't seen before. Um, it'll be the first time I'm ever growing it. But I planted a lot of seeds here and they all came up. And this is such a big plant that um, this is, I'm not gonna have enough room here for all four of those to stay. So I might end up moving a couple of those seedlings. Um, but I will fill something in over there where my sweet meat just didn't come up. And the last two over here are gourds, birdhouse gourds. Down the row here, we have Delectica squash here and here. Um, and then the middle is an okra plant. And the two down here on the end will be acorn squash. So, and then on this side is our zucchini and yellow squash. So the zucchini are looking really good. They're all looking really nice too. Got a squashy coming. So let's go ahead and talk about these tomatoes. So I finally got the rest of my fences up because my cherry tomatoes were starting to flop over. So I have those tied up and pruned down to a single stalk. As you can see I removed all of the lower branches from these and it's being supported just by that plastic miracle Grow tie tape. Um, and as this continues to grow, I'll continue to prune it down to a single stalk. One of our first flowers are setting. The next row here are all Roma tomatoes. And they are just about ready to be tied up. With these tomatoes, anytime I see one of these little suckers, like right here, I'm picking that off because I want this to grow up the single stalk. A really interesting thing that has been happening with the Rutgers is that I showed you um, a sucker and I've been trying to pick the suckers off because I want the plant to grow up a single stalk instead of having two main stalks or three or four because that gives you um, a much bushier kind of wild plant and having too many leaves um, and stems 
can lead to um, the spread of disease more easily if there isn't as much airflow to the plant. So I'm really trying to promote good airflow by keeping these really well pruned. Um, but what I found interesting with the Rucker tomatoes is that right as it comes up out of the ground, it split off into two stalks here. And one of these is the leader or the main stalk, and one was a sucker that grew really fast um, at the same rate, pretty much. And I don't know which is which, and I don't want to pick the wrong one, because if I pick the, uh, the leader, the main stalk, um, it's going to be what's called topping the plant, which is going to stop it from growing up anymore. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to have to leave them like this. But a lot of my ruckers all turned out that way. Um, which is really interesting because none of the other varieties that I have have done that. So these, when I prune them up and it gets taller and I'll prune them up, um, I'll just attach both stalks to the fencing. Overall, the tomatoes are looking really well, growing good. We just need some warmer nights to keep them growing. I decided just to go ahead and move them out when they were still really small, really tiny, just to see if they were gonna grow. And to my great surprise, they are finally starting to grow really well. Um, so we have tomatillos. So I have one there and one there. And then we have the Jersey Devil tomatoes. These are a Baker Creek as well. Um, so, I mean, this little guy has been struggling, but he's finally starting to grow and look um, actually much better than it did before. And see this one's, this one looks even better and dark galaxy tomato, which will be another big slicer that has um, kind of a purpley outer to it. I will say one good thing about all the cooler weather that we've been having is my broccoli and other brassicas have actually had a chance. <laughs> I was really worried when we were having those really hot days that they were gonna bolt and I wasn't gonna be able to get anything out of these plants, but um, I'm starting to see some broccolis button up down, in the, down at the bottom. Uh, so I'm feeling actually pretty good that I'm gonna have some broccolis and some cabbage be able to eat this season. Beautiful broccolis. Here's one that is just starting to uh, get a broccoli head on it. <laughs> and the cabbage are still looking really nice and it works out that the broccoli is shading the cabbage for a good portion of the day. Same with the Brussels sprouts. So I think I placed those pretty well. <laughs> This one is looking really nice. Spraying these down with neem oil um, to help prevent any type of pest like cabbage moss. Um, but I haven't seen too many, luckily, and I think the neem oil is really helping. Uh, a cauliflower that I think I'm gonna have to pick soon. Um, it's not very big. I purchased this as a started plant from a local nursery. It's be starting to go to seed. I'm guessing that's what these little nubbies are. Um, so I'm probably gonna have to pull this out. Like, if you can look, it is pretty small, like compared to my hand. I mean, maybe this is like a tennis ball size. <laughs> I, I don't I don't think it's gonna get any bigger. Chard um, that I've been using the leaves um, as like a lettuce wrap, which has been really nice. If you're not familiar familiar with it, um, it's kind of like a I would say an in between of. Uh, spinach and like a beet leaf. It's kind of got a little bit of a spinachy flavor, um, but definitely try. It's not bad. I find a cucumber beetle on these today on this basil leaf. So they've been eating the basil and the Swiss chard. Um, that's a new pest that just showed up. So I'm going to have to be very watchful for those. Oh, look at these peas. Aren't they glorious? A flowered and we are getting pea pods now. I've been picking a couple off and just eating them raw because they are just so good that way. Um, and then the, here's an update on what's going on with the radish that I let go to seed. So it actually makes really pretty flowers. They're white with like pink along the sides. Um, so it's a really pretty flower. It's very interesting. And I mean, this is, this is, if you can see, I know it's kind of bright, um, but this is the whole thing. So it gets really big when you let it go to seed. 
and the carrots are doing well and the broccoli and the beets. So I'm going to take a little pause from the tour um, to get out of the sun for a minute because I'm starting to get kind of warm. Um, I wanted to show something that I've been working on. So I got a three ring binder when I was starting to plan the garden to keep track of everything that I was doing. A little backstory about me. Um, I am a project manager and have been for five years for um, an IT company. Um, not going to go into that, but I do bring that up because uh, with my profession, um, I am using Excel all the time to plan the projects that I'm working on. Um, and so when I wanted to start planning the garden, laying out where things were going to go, when, um, I started to make a list of all the plans that I had. I was doing this by pencil and paper, and I know for a lot of people that would work out great but for me I was like there has to be an easier way for me to be organized to do this so uh, I pulled out my laptop and I started an Excel sheet um, charting every single kind of plant that I was growing for this season um, so I wanted to show you guys uh, what that looks like and how it's been helping me uh, really keep track of what's going on and planning for when I sowed something, uh, when I can expect to harvest it or should, um, if the conditions are right. So here it is. Um, I have this all out on an Excel sheet, Excel program. Um, look, my sweet Lucas made me that beautiful monarch butterfly picture. Isn't <laughs> it precious? I had to put it in my binder. Um, so I had this all made out on an Excel file on my computer and I printed it out because I'm obviously not gonna have my computer out in the garden with me and I wanted to have this um, accessible. So I went ahead and printed it out, organized by the type, so like beans. These are all the type of beans that I'm growing, um, characteristic of how it grows, what the, the fruits turn out to be, you know, what is it good for. Um, the season that, you know, I'm gonna grow, I can grow it in, in my region based on my growth growing time um, if it's you know direct sow or if there's something that you want to start inside or or it could be either or when so a lot of these are after last frost um, spacing so this is how big the plant itself gets so I can kind of make a plan for um, if I need a trellis or if you know how much feet in between I need just to maintain good airflow uh, days to maturity and then sow date and harvest date. So I kept track on a calendar. Um, so I'm just going back through and filling that in now because I have things in my garden that I should be expecting to harvest. Um, for example, the beets. I direct sowed the beets in the garden on April 8th and based on the days to maturity, I should be harvesting them on June 12th. Well, June 12th was four days ago. And my beets are definitely not ready yet. Um, but I'm keeping track, so I have my estimated date, and then when they are ready to harvest, I'm gonna put the actual harvest date. And that way I can track it for next year too, um, or even when I'm planning the fall garden, you know, what I'm gonna do there. And I'm gonna follow this same method when I start to plan my fall garden. I uh, sketched everything down where it's gonna go. Um, so right now, this is about where, where everything stands. Um, so that way I can look back year after year you know what I planted and where because um, I am gonna practice rotating my crops. So what crop rotation means is year after year you want to plant your vegetable plants, whatever varieties they are, in different locations of your garden and keep moving them around. The reason for this is it kind of confuses the pests. Like if I want to plant my tomatoes in the same spot every year, I mean I can definitely do that, but I might have the same pest or the same fungal issues or diseases or blight that I did the previous year still in the soil. I mean the pests are going to lay their eggs. The funguses and the diseases are going to remain in that soil. Um, so I want to move things around every year to give variety and you know the nutrients that plants give or take will be different um, depending on what you're growing too. By keeping record this way I'm going to know when I plan my next season garden which is going to be my fall garden. I don't want to plant the same stuff in the same places where my spring summer garden anthians were.
To having a chart like this, if you are a person who likes to plan things out and be neat and organized and loves a good spreadsheet, I would encourage you to do something like this. Um, or even, you know, if you want tips, uh, message me. Let's go and check the rest of the garden out. Along this trellis, on this side and this side are the beans. So I have pinto beans and Kentucky Wonder beans. Oh, look at this asparagus. So on the last garden tour, my asparagus would look more like, not even, but more a little like that guy. Um, and now I gotta step back just to get it in the frame. Look at those. They grow so quickly. When you don't cut your asparagus, this is what they do. They go, um, they turn into ferns like this. And what these little ferns are doing is they're growing seed pods. They'll drop back down to the ground, which then helps continue to seed and grow your asparagus bed. Really beautiful and very ornamental, even at this stage. Um, you're not gonna wanna eat them at this stage. They wouldn't be any good, but they are pretty. I have cucumbers down here. This guy just shot up overnight. He was not that big yesterday, so that's good. But I have sugar baby watermelons. They have not grown a whole lot since our last garden tour. I mean, they are definitely, they are bigger for sure, but just not as much as I would have anticipated in 20 days. But this one starting to set some little tiny flowers. Take a look at the potatoes um, and all the potatoes are looking really nice. Except for the sweet potatoes. Uh, the sweet potatoes, if you have been following along, I've been having a problem with my sweet potatoes. And I'm still having pest issues. Tortoise beetle is still there. I have been spraying these. Um, I had to take a few days off from spraying because the spraying um, of the neem oil was starting to burn the leaves. I mean, this one got burned kind of bad. Um, and I was spraying them in the evenings when it was cooler, but I am just not sure about these sweet potatoes. They are not looking good. I am still having the beetles destroy them um, every time a new leaf comes up and I think, oh, good, we're safe. Uh, we're not. <laughs> the beetles have come back. Um, something uh, burrowed into one of the holes where the sweet potatoes are. I'm having such trouble with these sweet potatoes. Um, I'm really not sure what kind of harvest I'm going to get out of these. Not feeling optimistic. First year trying sweet potatoes. Not working out the way I had hoped it would. I think I am quickly coming to a point where I have to use another type of uh, pest pesticide that's stronger than neem oil because these just are not gonna make it. Actually, this is a great example. Look at this. Look at this tort. Oh, it flicked off. Okay, well that tortoise beetle was right there and he just made that hole in a brand new leaf. So they are still a problem. They are still eating my sweet potatoes. I am having a little bit of pest issue. I saw flea beetles on these, so I sprayed them good with neem oil too. But I'm not as concerned um, because these are really nicely established. I don't think the flea beetles are gonna be able to kill the plant at this point. But then sweet potatoes are just not gonna make it, I don't think. So one thing to say about, um, if you're interested about growing potatoes and, and what they look like in different stages. Um, so this row here, these three with the Kennebec potatoes, um, I put multiple tubers in each hole, probably three. A lot of them had three tubers because I had so many of them. Um, so I put three in each hole. Now, if you look over here, if you can kind of see it, the sun's in the way, 
But over there on the ends, um, the white superior potatoes and then back behind them where the red New Orleans are, um, I didn't have as many of those, so I did one tuber per hole. And you can just see the difference of how one plant looks over there versus multiple in one hole. Honestly, I mean, I love the way that these look here. They're so much more fuller and um, just look so green and lush compared to the ones where there's just a sing single tuber over there. So I'm curious to see um, the size difference. You know, how are the sizes gonna compare of this potato where there's multiple tubers all in the same spot compared to the ones over there where there's only, we will have to wait and see. According to my chart, we will have potatoes ready in about end of July um, and some into early August. So we have a little bit of time to wait for the potatoes still. Over here are all the peppers. Lots of beautiful peppers. This first row are banana peppers and they're looking pretty good. We're getting some pest damage on these leaves too. This little guy, I accidentally topped him the other day. So I'm not sure if this is gonna continue to grow. I hope so. This is a purple bell pepper. Um, I should have plucked the flower off this because it's not that old of a plant but I already have a purple pepper on it and I just decided to let it grow. This basil is looking so great. On here are Jacob's cattle bush beans. Um, I've had a little, a little something coming along and nibbling on the seedlings. As soon as they sprout up, they get bit off. Um, so I've had to re-sow many of these. So that's why there's some empty spaces because something keeps eating them. All these glorious sunflowers are gonna line this back row here. Real soon, to a garden near you, it's gonna be beautiful, beautiful raspberries. I mean, these bushes are overflowing with raspberries. Yeah, this whole thing down, way down to the end of the garden and back are all raspberries branches are so heavy they're all just getting pulled way down uh, so Carmen and I have to get these branches tied up because a lot of these berries are laying on the ground but we are gonna have so many raspberries uh, we'll be making a lot with those kids gardens looking really nice we got it weeded a few days ago We've got a really beautiful Ford Hook zucchini right there. It's got really great color variation. Um, it is not powdery mildew. That is just what the leaves um, can look like sometime on zucchinis. Have two types of melons growing. We have a Kajari melon on this side and a Madhu Raz Rajasthan honey melon which is going to grow up along this side. So melons like to grow in hot hot weather and we've not had a whole lot of that yet so the seedlings are still pretty tiny still coming up. Um, Here she is. We have, despite the pests, despite the weather, things are growing. It is getting more green, more green, more green. Wilma is enjoying watching everything grow too. Well, I am almost out of battery and I'm sure this garden tour is probably getting way too long. So I'm just gonna do a quick pan around the perennial garden and we are gonna wrap this thing up for today. Do you see all these strawberries, all these red strawberries in here? This is a climbing rose that I just saved from Lowe's. It was on the clearance rack gonna be an orange colored rose like a peach orange colored rose I'm really excited about that we're gonna build a nice trellis um, tall trellis for it
had to give an update on her bleeding heart though. I mean, look how great she looks. Isn't it amazing how plants can grow when you plant them the right direction? <laughs> looks nice. Well, my friends, it is time for us to part ways, but I am so thankful that you took the time to hang out while we did today's third garden tour, June 16th, 2020. I'll be making garden tours more frequently um, now since we are really getting in the summer and things should be changing a lot week to week. Um, so please stay tuned for those and also check out all my other videos too. Uh, we are really trying to grow our channel here at Sandals and Steel Toes and we are so thankful for your support if you haven't already please subscribe. Click that subscribe button so you can be notified when we have new videos. Um, if you find these videos interesting at all that keep your attention, um, please uh, share with your friends and family. Uh, your support means the world to us and it helps our channel grow and get to more viewers out there. So thank you again. Please do something that you love today. Uh, it's really fulfilling to spend even just a few minutes a day doing something that you really care and are passionate about. So I encourage you, whatever it may be, get out there and do something that you love. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye everyone. Thanks. Look at that booty work, mowing that ditch. When she does all that work, she's a fine ass sexy. Look at that booty work, trees in the way. Look at those capris and those calves, working hard, working hard, mama. <laughs> Oh, sweating so bad.